Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present to you your hosts, Spencer and Laura Williams. Hey everyone, I'm Spencer. I'm Laura, and we're married with board games. It's the year 2084, a time when our technology has advanced to where a person can have artificial memories and dreams implanted into their brain. Dreams like fighting for a team of rebels looking to take down the opposing leader. So, nothing bad could come of this technology, well, right? Well, as demonstrated in the movie Total Recall from the 1990s, a lot of bad could come of that. Like questioning your own sanity and not even knowing what's real and what's a dream. But luckily, in the Total Recall official tabletop game from Overworld Games, you don't have to worry about that part. You just have to worry about winning the game for your team. And in this re-implementation of Good Cop, Bad Cop, that's easier said than done. Let's head over to the table to find out why. Alright, here we have Total Recall. Brief disclaimer. These are not final components, so this is not the final version of the game. Secondly, I haven't set this up for any kind of, you know, the correct gameplay. I'm just displaying the components for you to give you an idea of what you'll get with the game. I have set up one playmat for one player to show you how that works. First of all, this is going to start out similar to Good Cup, Bad Cup. You can have three cards and they're all characters from the movie. And based on how many of what type of card you have is going to determine what team you're on, whether you're federal or a rebel player. In this case, I'm going to show you what I have. I have, whoa, I've got the rebel leader, Kuato. Then there's George, a rebel supporter. And then finally, over here, there's that Lori. She's bad, unless you're from the Fed side, then she's good. But in this case, I am on the Rebel side because I have two Rebel cards. If I had had two Red cards, two Fed cards, then I would have been on the Fed team. Now, depending on how many players you have in the game, there's a specific way you're going to set up and keep certain cards in the game. And, and it's there is a way that you determine to make sure that no one gets two leader cards. So that, that is accounted for in the rules. I do want to show you the rest of the cards, though, to show you um, who else is in the game. You've got um, Quaid, of course, uh, Arnold himself, then you've got uh, Melina, all the characters you like or don't like from the movie. There's Thumbelina, who could forget her, um, and then there's uh, Mary, and, and let's get over to the Fed side. There's Cohagen, the, the leader for the Fed team, and there's Richter, Everett. But yeah, there's a, there's a good variety of the characters, all the, the main characters from the movie. Everybody starts with one turbinium. There's a place on your player mat for that, the turbinium supply. Speaking of player mats, there are eight of these. Um, they're very nice. They have the, uh, the actions you can do on your turn. So down there, you've got investigate, V1, hidden character card, shoot, shoot the player whom you're aiming, aim, expose one of your hidden character cards to aim your gun at any player and take all of their turbinium or plot, expose one of your hidden character cards and give one turbinium to any player to draw a plot card. Speaking of plot cards, those are these. And uh, these are gonna have quotes from the movie um, that, uh, and then it'll help you do a special action. Uh, what you're experiencing is a free form delusion. And so this, this plot card, place this in front of you, the turn order is reversed. This does not cause you to take two turns in a row. So again, hey, I got five kids to feed, or is it four? Which one is it? Again, uh, quotes from the movie with uh, some artwork from that scene, and then a special ability. So this definitely uh, ties in, helps the game tie in with the movie very nicely. Mention shooting. Um, the base game, I believe, comes with these cards, with a, a gun card and the standee. I think there's the option to upgrade to uh, the 3D, or not the 3D printed, but essentially gun models, miniature miniature gun models, so that'd be pretty cool. And that's what you're going to be pointing at your opponents to aim at them or to shoot them. And that's pretty much it as far as components go. I do want to talk to you a little bit about how the game works. Um, it works standard. You know, I, I went over all the actions. What happens is... Once you're shot, if you're not a leader, you're not out of the game. Actually, you flip over your board and now you're a recall scientist. So um, there are actually three different teams you could potentially be on uh, in this game, there being three different victory conditions. 
If you're a recall scientist, your turns change. So instead of doing everything that you could do when you were in the dream, uh, you can swipe, take a turbidium from any player, implant, choose a gun that is aimed at a player and aim it at a different player so you can mess with what's going on with the other teams, and then uh, lobotomize, choose two different two character cards held by different players and exchange them so you could very, you know, easily change the, the gameplay going on in the dream, change the dynamic in an interesting way. So the player, so the win conditions are this. Um, so if you shoot, if you kill, so if you're in the dream, let's say I'm on this team. If I shot, if someone else on my team or myself shot Cohagen at twice, because there are these wounded tokens, you have to shoot the leaders twice. So um, if you shoot the leader, they get a wound. First of all, you have to figure out who the leader is. Uh, but they get a wound, and if they get shot again, they're dead, and then the rebel side wins the game. Of course, the opposite works for the feds. If they find Quato and uh, shoot him, wound him, and then kill him, they win. But then again, I mentioned the recall scientist team. Um, the way they win is if no rebel or fed player has turbinium. So that's why that... Uh, that swipe ability comes into play, take an opponent from any player. So if you can get all of the turbinium out of the hands of the players in the dream, the recall scientists win. There is one other outstanding way to win. If somehow one player has both of the leaders among their cards through the plot, through the use of the plot cards or maybe some of the recall scientists abilities, um, then they can win. So if they have both of the, the team leaders cards in their hands, they win the game. So again, similar to Good Cop, Bad Cop, if you've played that game before, but different, uh, very thematic to tie in with the movie. Okay, so you've seen the game. Mm -hmm. You kind of have a sense of how it works. Right. So I mentioned a couple times in the overview about how well uh, the some of the elements of the game really integrate the movie with it. Mm -hmm. One of those being like the plot cards, right? Because you've got the quotes from the movie. Yeah. And then uh, based on what the quote is, you know, the the action of of what you're doing mm -hmm. fits in nicely. And one of the things that I really appreciate, um, especially after watching the movie, is he always, Arnold, uh, always, always, Arnold. yes, <laughs> he always had that sense of, I don't even know who's on what side. You could never trust anybody. Right. And I mean, of course, it'd be hard to tell. Right. And if you were ever in that situation, which mm -hmm. I hope you're not. But uh, that's also, that was very well developed and implemented into this game. Yes, and, and I really like that. I like that it's three cards mm -hmm. to determine where your loyalties lie. And with the players being able to look at your cards, they can't actually honestly know for sure. Right, even if you look at one card, you still don't know for sure. No. It's almost like, you know, some guy's doing two, or doing a good thing to make you think they're on your side. But then, no, he's on the bad side. So yeah. that that fits in nicely with this game, uh -huh. and it's I, and it's a great thematic touch. Well, and I like that it, it, that sets it apart from mm -hmm. other deduction games. Right. That um, just how uncertain mm -hmm. you can be oh, yeah. about it. Um, so yeah, I'm a big fan of that point. And, and I mentioned the plot card, so a lot of your favorite quotes from the movie are on those, so that's really fun. And then what I thought was a really nice touch in this game was the addition of the recall scientist team. Yes. So that when you're dead, you're out of the game. You're not out of the game. You're not out of the game. You yes. keep playing. And it's again, it's a thematic thing where, you know, you're playing the role of these these scientists that that are kind of behind the scenes a little bit, controlling things sort of in the movie. Um, and you still have an objective. You're still trying to... You to, need that turbinium. Right. Yeah. Um, so again, very, very well done incorporating the recall scientists into this and making it an additional team, uh, changing your objective so that way even though you're, you're dead, you're just, you're never out. There's always something to do. Yes. Your, your objective just changes. Right. So I really enjoy that and, and I like that. It's not an elimination game. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's deduction and, and taking risks. Um, I like that you got to take those risks based on the decisions that you're making. Yeah. Um, and then um, what I really enjoy is, is some games kind of have restrictions on the kinds of things you can lie about, right? That's true. Yeah. And, and this one, it's 
You can say, I, goes. I am on the Fed's team. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, would I do so, you know, it, would I do what I just did if I was on this team? So you can, you know, say, oh, I have two blue cards and one red card. You can do any kind of lying that you want. And, and again, that's very fitting with the theme. Um, everybody's, you can't trust anybody in the movie. You know, everyone's lying for their best interest. And, and I really like that. Now, we talked about how, you know, we, we haven't, I hadn't seen the movie really uh, until we looked into this game. Right, yeah, we played the game first without it. And and it's fun. Yes. But your knowledge of the movie definitely multiplies your enjoyment. Yes. Well, it's one of those things we talk about this of there are games out there that they make a series of them all with different themes mm -hmm. and lots of people will say, "Well, once you have one of them, you don't need them all," right? And I don't feel it's the same way. Same with this. If you've played Good Cop, Bad Cop, this is not the exact same game. Mm -hmm. There are those different things like that we've already mentioned that make it different and enhance that gameplay. Right. So that if you're one of those people who is saying, I've, I've played plenty of good cop, bad cop, I don't need that again, there's, there's more to this. So Definitely. be sure to give it a try. Right. And I, and I totally agree with that. So like, like she was saying, whether you're new to good cop, bad cop system or looking for a refreshing take on it, Total Recall is a fantastic large group game that nails the theme of its source material. Before playing this game for the first time, we had never actually seen Total Recall and we enjoyed our first couple of plays. It was a fun group experience that felt different each time we played. And no, we weren't experiencing a freeform delusion. But after watching the movie for, you know, research purposes, the fun factor of the game increased exponentially. Now again, that's not to say the game isn't fun if you've never seen the movie, but fans of Total Recall will definitely appreciate the tabletop version. And so, for the enjoyable plays, thematic implementation, and all of the other points we covered in our discussion, we throw our full support behind Total Recall and say, get behind this game if you enjoy large group social deduction games. Thanks so much for watching. Check out our other reviews and previews on our website, marriedwithbg.com, where you'll also find information about our podcast. And don't forget to relax. You'll live longer.